hi, this is Jeff Gallick, and welcome to Data Demystified. Uh, what I'll do right now is go through a quick demonstration of how this visualization works so you can understand how simple and compound interests differ. If you haven't already, take a moment to watch the main video, which I'll link to below, and that'll give you a sense of why we're even talking about this in the first place. So in this Google Sheet, I have two tabs. One is called Simple versus Compound Interest, and the other is called COVID-19 Spread Simulation. I'll talk about the latter tab in a different video. So focusing on compound interest, we have two places where we could input something. The first is how much we start with. This is our starting value. So let's say we're going to invest $100. And then we have our interest rate, which is how much money the bank will pay you for the privilege of having that money sit in their accounts. So 10% in this example. On the left here, I have simple interest, which is the case where you don't allow the bank to continue borrowing your interest that you earn. Instead, you take it out every period and, you know, do whatever you want with it. If you look at this case, you find that if you put $100 in, the bank gives you $10, you take that out into your wallet, and you're left with $110 in total. If this repeats for 30 periods, as we have down here, you're left with $400 in total, 100 that you started with and 300 extra that you earned in interest. We can compare that to the case of compound interest over here on the right. Again, we start with $100, we give it to the bank, they give us $10, but this time we let the $10 sit in the bank instead of actually going back in our wallet, and the bank will then pay us 10% interest on those $110. We see that right here. And again, if we scroll to the bottom, we find that after 30 periods, instead of $400, like in the simple interest case, in the compound interest case, we have $1,744, a whole lot more. That is, in fact, the power of compound interest. I've also put a column here on the right to tell you how much extra you've earned from compound interest. So again, if we see at the 30th period, the last period I have here, if we leave this money in the bank and let the bank continue to borrow our interest and let it compound, what we see is that we earn an extra 1300 or so dollars just by letting that happen as compared to the simple interest case. That's quite a bit. And finally, I have a visualization down here, just a simple graph to denote how this changes over time. So again, we see if we start with $100 in the simple interest case, our money certainly does grow. That line goes up, but it doesn't grow nearly as quickly as in the compound interest case, the blue line here. What we see is that the speed with which our money grows increases. That line gets steeper or more vertical over time. And in fact, with compound interest or any kind of exponential growth, one of the hallmarks is that the rate at which it grows accelerates with time. And that really is why this is such a powerful idea. I hope you find this interesting, and I'll see you in the next video.